Good morning. I cannot believe we've been doing this for two months, but uh, evidently we have uh, from what they're telling me. So uh, we've got a different one again today for you. We're trying to keep it a little bit different here. So today we're going to do a virtual tour. Uh, that is recorded, so we're just going to play it. But we're going to have uh, afterwards, we're going to have the folks that are in the video. Uh, we're going to interview them, talk with them a little bit about the process. So if you have any questions, uh, now, please, there's a little bit of a delay, so you know, so if you'll go ahead and send in your questions or comments now on the chat, uh, if you'll send them in now, we'll be, we'll be able to see them by the time this gets done. The, the uh, video is probably about 14 and a half minutes, and uh, so we're going to run that. Um, so as you can see, I'm feeling pretty good because I finally got a haircut, so I'm happy about that. Um, of course, uh, I was looking like Conway Twitty back in the 70s. It was looking pretty bad. If I put a ball cap on, Actually, my wings were getting so bad that I think if I fell off a pole, I could have glided to the ground like Dumbo. But uh, So when I went to get it cut, though, I have to tell you what I did. If you remember the webinar with the ponytail, I, uh, I wore that to the, uh, to the salon there. The ladies cut my hair forever, and I stood outside, and I didn't realize I had to bring my own mask. So she wouldn't let me in initially, and she said, no, you can't come in. You have to get a mask. I said, oh, you don't have one? She goes, do you have one? I said, yeah, I'm in the car. I said, now, you sure you're ready to cut this? It's been a while. She goes, nah, it shouldn't be that bad. Of course, when I turned around and they saw the ponytail, uh, yeah, they all came out with their cameras and everything, so I had some fun with it. But uh, looking forward to today because you get to meet some folks. Not only you'll get to see the processes on the virtual tour, but uh, you'll get to meet some folks face-to-face -face here, and we'll be able to ask them some questions. So remember, go in the chat room if you have any questions as far as the calibration process or if you have anything about how we do our repair process. And uh, we have some folks, there's been a little change to it, and they're going to inform you on that. But uh, let's go ahead and go to the, uh, the video we've got of the virtual tour. Hey, you made it. Okay, there's a pandemic going on, but as long as we follow the rules, I think we'll be all right. Come on in. So normally, I would make you have to sign in. You're gonna have to get shot with the gun, but we'll forego that just for this, okay? I did want to mention, uh, you know, the overall company for us is uh, Technology for Energy Corporation, and one of the divisions is Power Metrics, but you can also see we also have the Nuclear Products Division, Materials Testing, and ACES. We work in the aviation industry as well. So let's go on back and start meeting some people. And we're going to meet one of the people whose name you have seen a lot, but now you'll get to put a face with that name. You've seen Chiquilla Mattress on all these emails whenever you're dealing with an RMA or any repairs. The first stop here is always with Chiquilla. So finally you're going to get to meet the famous Chiquilla Mattress that you see on all those emails. Hey, Chiquilla. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. Good. I know you're busy and I'm not trying to bother you, but no all of the uh, all of the RMAs and the repairs and everything stops with you first, right? That is correct. That's so they right. can email me, call me, um, however they want to do it, and perfect. we'll go ahead and get it processed for them. That's perfect. And then it'll go from here back into the manufacturing folks from Chiquilla. And then, and then that's when they check it out, and from there, that's when we call you and say, hey, this needs to be done, or that needs to be done in the amount. But this is where it all starts with Chiquilla Mattress. Thanks, girl. Thank you. <laughs> Let's go. And now we'll make a quick stop, and you guys can see the bunker uh, where we've been doing all our webinars from. If you've been watching the webinars, we did a quick peek at it. This is the, our multi-purpose room here at Power Metrics, and we've used it for uh, the filming of the webinars we've been doing every Tuesday and Thursday. And here's the bench we've been using. You can see some of the production, and believe me, Jared's cleaned it up. There's usually a lot more stuff up in here. You can see uh, this is where we've been making it happen every Tuesday and Thursday, and we really appreciate uh, the support and everybody and the response we've gotten from it. But this is where it all happens, is in here. So um, we'll move through here. Now let's stop in for just a second and talk to, uh, to Tim Roberts right here. Tim is head of quality here at Power Metrics. How you doing, John? Fine, Tim. How you doing? Doing very well. Well, we're an ISO 9001 2015 certified company. Um, risk management uh, is one of the tenets of it. Uh, employee um, centered on all of the corrective actions that we do. Management involved. Um, just basically always doing the right thing and trying to get better all the time. Um, that's basically the main tenets of the uh, program. Tim, you're also uh, involved in all the calibration right here? Yeah, yeah. Before I moved into my position here as the quality manager, I was in the calibration lab for about 12 years. Um, so they still lean on me for a little bit of support. I don't do the calibrations per se right now, but 
um, I am a resource, uh, and yeah, I'm still very familiar with the process. <laughs> That's right. Thanks, Tim. Take care, bud. <laughs> Tim, why don't you come show us the uh, cow lab since you're the pro at it? Yeah, no trouble. All right, let's go. Make the corner without falling and busting my rig. <laughs> And our calibration lab, it is secure, so I have to use my keys again. Come on in. At one time, this was Tim's world. So we have multiple setups, but him being the pro, I'll let him take it from here. So the calibrations, we have two systems which help with our turn times. Uh, the systems were developed specifically for the PowerMaster line of products. Uh, the calibrations that we perform are NIST traceable through the standards that are used in the system. All the calibrations are done in this room. Um, the service times, we try to do a two-week, 14-day turn time. Uh, so the systems help us to meet those deadlines. We know you have deadlines and we want to get the products back to you as quickly as we can. We know you need the testing needs to be done, um, so we're doing our best to try to get them back to you as quickly as we can. The multiple stations help a lot. Help out a lot, basically double the output of the, of the Cal Lab. So here's where we do all of our calibrations. Now let's go see where we do all of the manufacturing and the reparations on the equipment. Let's head towards manufacturing. And we're walking, we're walking, we're walking. I once caught a fish this big. So now we're heading back towards the manufacturing area. Many people that know me out there are wondering how I can do this and not fall down, because they know how spastic I am. So this is the, uh, the manufacturing area for power metrics. We really hate to see all those orange cases ready to go out to customers. So let's go back here and talk to Brian Lyford. Brian does checkouts on the equipment. Brian does, well, you know what? I'm not going to steal Brian's thunder. I'm going to let Brian tell you about it. So this is Brian Lyford right here. Hey, how you doing? Uh, this is Brian's first day here at Pyrometrics. It's incredible that he's jumped up this fast and is doing that well here. Now I'll let, you, I'll let Brian tell you. He's been here a long time. And Brian actually, before anything goes out the door, Brian has to bless it, but he also handles stuff when it comes in as far as uh, the, uh, any kind of repairs and everything. So uh, when it comes to Pyrometrics, there's not much around here that Brian doesn't touch. I'm glad he said that because I want a copy of this tape whenever it's <laughs> over with. Uh, but no, we, uh, we've been here for 17 years this year. Um, we've took care of the uh, Pyrometrics line ever since its uh, birth. Uh, and we just, uh, we, we enjoy doing it. Uh, any, anything comes in for any kind of repair, we take care of that. Uh, any kind of uh, uh, test, manufacturing test, we do that. Um, when it's built from the ground up, we test the boards. Uh, we test it before it calibrates. Uh, whenever it gets done calibrating, we uh, uh, test it before it goes out the door. Uh, if you have a problem uh, out there, uh, you, you'll probably call Ray in the field and, and talk to him about it and uh, and he'll get with me and we'll expect it when it gets in here and we'll throw it on the bench, take care of it and get it back to you as fast as possible. In the processor basically when something comes in and there might be an issue with it, it comes to you and you do a check out on it and you're the one that tells the customer and says, hey, this is what we think is wrong with the product. It's going to be this much. Tell us if you want us to move forward with the with the yeah, work, right? Well, we, we tell the admin and then the admin. Right, sure, yeah, the, our admin department, right. Don't want to cut them out. And, uh, but also you do a final check on them before they go out the door, right? Yep. yep. Perfect. So you bless them before they go out. Yep. Yeah, we try our best to. <laughs> Good deal. Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it, man. No problem. All right, let's move on and we'll head back this way. Since we caught her at just the right moment, this is Pam, and she's actually assembling a 4 Series for a customer right now. So we caught her at just the right time. So you can see she's putting it together. And then, of course, it's going to go through all that quality with Brian that you just met and before it goes out the door. Thanks, Pam. We'll get out of your hair. And we're heading on. Okay, so let's leave manufacturing now. We're going to head up and uh, go see the engineers. Of course, they're always upstairs, right? So we'll head up here. 
Ooh, stares backwards. Dare I? <laughs> this is actually harder than I thought it would be. I wonder how many people are watching this going, please let him bust his rear. Please let him fall. All right. Of course, because uh, of all the new products we're coming out with here lately, it's kind of a highly secure area. So, uh, but I think y'all are right. I'll let you in. Come on. Okay, let's go down the uh, engineering hallway. Of course, almost all of them are working from home now, and so ooh, while they're not here, they give me a hard time. So hold on. Hey. Oh, okay. Let's move on. Okay, moving on. Moving on. So, uh, like I said, there's hardly anybody here engineering uh, because they're working from home right now. Oh wait, there is someone here. Uh, looks like Phil Fishbox here uh, from Clemson University. And uh, looks like he's working hard in his office. Uh, hey Phil, how's it going? Hello, John. <laughs> um, nice outfit, Phil. Yeah, you know, this wasn't part of the deal. <laughs> It was just a bed, Phil, but uh, we'll get out of your yeah, hair, yeah, which yeah. looks awful good in that championship yeah, head, yeah. by the way. Just saying. Uh, not that good. <laughs> all right, all right. So here's another part of the engineering department, and here is Steve Hudson, who is working on developing the flux capacitor that we've heard could be a serious invention for power metrics. But, um, it will be 20 years in the future. 20 years in the future. I like that. So this is Steve Hudson, and he's not only going to talk a little bit about the department, but from there we're going to go back to another section, but I'll let him take it from here. Okay. So yeah, I'm Steve Hudson. I'm Vice President of Hardware Engineering. I've uh, been with Parametrics for 11 years now. Uh, had a really good time. Good time. We, we have a good industry. We have a good product. We have really good people here. Um, in the 11 years I've been here, I've got to see basically the genesis of three generations of products, uh, so it's been really exciting just to be here and be able to help develop some new stuff. and. Uh, one of the favorite parts for me, though, is getting to go to the meter school because um, there you get to meet the customers, you get to see the people that actually use the equipment, and uh, we love our customers. They're always very honest with us. They tell us the good, the bad, the otherwise. Um, I actually get to teach some of the classes, so that's very rewarding for me just because, you know, I feel like I'm giving back to the industry. So, but, but yeah, come on down. We'll show you actually one of the uh, one of the interesting rooms that we have here in the lab uh, that's part of our development process. Um, we call this the engineering calibration room, and basically uh, part of what we do here is, uh, as we're developing products, we use these two devices here. This is a PowerMaster 8903, which is a calibration system, um, and to be able to get the super high accuracy that we do in our devices, we have to go through and do a, a calibration of the system, and uh, engineering uses this system as part of what we call the qualification process, where we actually go through during development and make sure that everything meets its specs properly. Uh, the other big part of that is this device here, which is a temperature and humidity chamber. Uh, it's part of the environmental qualification that we do for our products. Um, they're, of course, they're used outside, so we need to make, make sure that they work in Siberia as well as the Sahara Desert. And so this temperature chamber allows us to simulate all those environments to make sure that your products work properly. So now you have a phase to go with all of the new products and everything when you're out there working with them and you're saying to yourself, man, this thing works really, really well. How did they come up with it? This is how we came up with it. Thanks, Steve. See you, John. All right. Well, let's go out this way now. I'm going to turn around and walk backwards again and get Chris Mullins in the shot, but he always runs. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And now we're going to go meet the man that I call the professor who, when I first came here, I would have died on the vine if it hadn't been for it, but you know what you need to do if you want to talk to Ray Gore. Hey, Ray. Yeah, we're about to come down the hall. You in between calls? Good. Okay. We'll be there in just a second. Thanks. All right. We got some time. Let's go see Ray. <laughs> this, hey! This is Ray Gore. Um, as you can see, he's got one or two things going on every day, and he talks to one or two people a day. So, um... So I'm gonna let Ray tell you. You've been here what a month or two, Ray? Yeah, just about a month or two. That's about it. But what a surprise! The phone's ringing. But anyway, uh, yeah, I've got a couple of things going on here. Again, nice to talk to you guys, and hope everybody is staying safe and healthy. Uh, I'm doing actually a CND 
uh, from the back there. So what I do on this is kind of go over it, make sure everything's ready to go, uh, ready to ship to the customer. So I'm doing that right there. I'm actually doing some software verification here, making sure that works with this unit here. And I'm actually handling another CND with a KYZ pickup here. So, but anyway, that's my world. So <laughs> I got to get this phone call. I'll see y'all. Hey, have a good one. And by the way, this right here for the crazier service types that Ray has to set up, we have to have one especially for Ray. And that's how we get some of the crazier things populated out of this thing. So let's keep moving. I couldn't tell you many times I've been talking to customers on the phone or been out in the field and people said, man, I wish you would come by and visit y'all in Knoxville. Well, uh, that is, this is one of the positives about the pandemic, right, is that uh, we're doing a lot of virtual stuff right now with all of our webinars, uh, but also now you get to uh, at least get a tour of the facility and some of the folks that you've talked to on the phone or emailed, now you can put faces with that. So uh, we really appreciate you guys coming by and uh, hope that you uh, got something out of this. Remember, if you need anything, please, please give us a call and uh, be careful out there, all right? And don't forget, be anxious about nothing and pray about everything. God bless y'all. Thanks. So I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the virtual tour. Um, I'm amazed I walked backwards that far and didn't bust my rear. Uh, we, have, uh, we have some of the stars of the video here with us, so we're gonna go through. A lot of times people ask us, uh, you know, that process of either uh, getting a uh, calibration done or a repair done. So we actually have the folks through that process that we're gonna talk about a little bit because there's been a little change to the process. So uh, you guys remember Chiquilla from the, uh, from the, the video. So Chiquilla, there were some changes, right, that we've done recently as far as on the RMAs, right? That is correct. Okay. Um, so basically, as you know, mm -hmm. I'm always asking you for that serial number. That's right. So I definitely need the serial number right. um, on, on at least the main unit mm -hmm. or the probe that the customer sends in. Sure. Once I get that serial number, I can go into the system, create an RMA, um, and or they can go on the website and there's a link on the website where they can go in and ask and re request for an RMA. I get those web requests as well. Um, so once I get that information, mm -hmm. I process the RMA. Also, I process the quote at the same time. To speed up everything, we ask for payment up front before we send to the back for our technicians up to a pre-approval amount of anywhere from a thousand to two thousand dollars depending on which type of unit the customer sure. has. Um, so once I get the paperwork, I get the payment or the purchase order number, then I go ahead and send it on off to the customer. Um, and then the customer sends in the equipment with that paperwork, and then it goes off to the techs in the back. Perfect. And we also recently, didn't we change where the flex probes are free when they send in for the calibration? That is correct. So anytime that they have a unit that they send in, they get three flex probes. Um, calibrate it or, re or well calibrate it excuse me for free Perfect. and then any MENs, SRs um, type probes those are $75 each sure, at, this, at this time. Yeah mm -hmm. the high volt yes. probes and stuff and mm -hmm. I know that was a key what you said a minute ago on they can go on the web and do it because of time zones and that if they want to go ahead and send it in that is they can correct. actually start the process on the web. That is correct Sweet. and it makes it easier for the customer and as soon as I get in in the morning I start the process for that one. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you just do one or two in a day. Right? <laughs> <laughs> right. well, well, thanks. So now you all know, you always see that name on all of that paperwork and those emails. So now you know that's the start of the process is getting that serial number to Chiquilla. Okay? So, um, so now the next step in the process, so you heard what Chiquilla said. So Chiquilla starts the RMA process. She sends you the RMA. And then when the, when the unit comes in here, then the next step is, is Brian Leifert, another star of the video that you saw, Brian does an inspection. And if it turns out there's more to it, and Brian will talk about that in a little bit, but we actually had someone comment that Brian had a UK hat, but he is a staunch volunteer. So I'm gonna let him explain that. Okay. <laughs> The story behind the UK hat is we've got another Kentucky fan here that uh, had one. I said, let me borrow you a Kentucky fan because everybody I root for loses. <laughs> so uh, they, Kentucky was really good. They were actually favored to win everything. 
and thanks to the lucky Kentucky hat, we put them down. <laughs> so we wore it and they got put out like after the first or second round, so it was awesome. So every time we play Kentucky, we donned the, ten the Kentucky hat, <laughs> thus calling it the lucky Kentucky hat. Nice. So from what Shaquilla said, so after the RMA, she, she gets her uh, paper, she gets the information she needs, starts the process. When the unit comes in here, it goes Brian Alexander in the back, and it, then it comes from there, then they bring it to you, and that starts the process of your inspection of the unit, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we get the unit from that, which we've got a um, computer system there with SAP that we can follow the RMAs, and once we get the RMAs in there and we get a PDO for them, and everything's agreed upon, we start looking at it, uh, we go by date, you know, first uh, try to get things out just as quickly as possible sure. and uh, once we get everything uh, took care of we uh, uh, we give it a diagnosis and look at it and if, if it's to where we can we go ahead and fix it and get it out the door just as fast as possible. Sure and, and if you come across something then that goes back to Chiquilla and Chiquilla contacts the customer mm -hmm. and says uh, we've discovered this while it's in here, do you want us to do this? And then you get a yay or nay from the customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and w usually whenever we, most of the time, the like Chiquilla said, it's agreed upon beforehand. Mm -hmm. So we're able to work on it. Once I get it, then it goes to Josh, and Josh will do a, a calibration check to make sure the numbers are good. And uh, if the numbers are good, it comes back to me again for a final test. I final test it, and then it'll go to QC to uh, check one more time before it gets back to you. Sure. And wouldn't you say that probably the more drastic uh, repairs that need to be done and uh, probably, I hate to put it this way, but more damage done to the units in the, in the load boost process, if they don't do the correct connect and disconnect off there, that's when you've seen ones that probably have to go back and contact the customer because it turns out it's a lot more damage is done, right? Absolutely. Uh, if you don't completely disconnect from one phase before you move to the other one, it's dangerous for you and it's that's also right. dangerous for the union. Uh, it can blow up very quickly uh, and the longer you leave it on there, uh, the more it's going to, more carnage it's going to do. So exactly. It just like goes from one board to the next. So I've seen some mighty dandy uh, <laughs> jobs there that, uh, that <laughs> a lot of damage. Up. A lot of damage done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'll smell that too for years to come. <laughs> That's right. I've walked in before and smelled him when I entered the room. All right. Thanks, Brian. So, so as you heard with uh, with Brian, when it when it comes through, so it starts with Chiquilla, and Chiquilla gets that serial number from you and starts the RMA process. And then once uh, she does that, then you send it in to us with the paperwork. We get it in here. Now some people uh, drop them off. I mean, I have to say, bring that up too. I mean, you can hand carry them in here and drop them off. So we have that happen too. But if you send them in to us, then it goes through the, the back with Brian Alexander in shipping. Then he brings it to Brian Lyford. And then when Brian does his inspection, if it falls within that amount, then we'll go ahead and just do it and send it on. But if not, if it's been a little bit more catastrophic and it's going to be some more money, we will contact you and get approval before we move on. Then when Brian does that and he does uh, the reparations to it, before it leaves here, it has to go through quality. And you remember Tim Roberts from the video. So Tim is handling our uh, quality. So when it leaves Brian, it comes to you, right? Yeah, so basically uh, the last step in the process is a final check by QC and then, of course, the shipping of the documents. So once Brian is done with, the, with, with all the repairs and the service, it'll come back to a holding area awaiting for the paperwork to be completed by the administration team. Once that's completed, uh, we have a software system that will alert us that it's ready for final inspection. And what we basically do is we do one more power on of the unit, log software versions, make sure that uh, if software updates were, were needed or requested, those have been performed. Uh, we'll check over everything that was returned, any cables, the unit itself, uh, review the paperwork that talks about what service was requested, what service was performed, reconcile the inventory list that was created uh, when we get the unit. Uh, usually those are completed before they get here. Sometimes we, uh, we complete them when they get here in case it's not totally completed. But we're going to reconcile that. If there's any new purchases, any new cables or anything, we make sure that those are with the unit before they're shipped. Once we do that, we do a little bit of processing inside of our data tracking system to basically get it ready for shipping in the back, and then it will be taken to our shipping area, and it will ship out that day. And as part of the quality initiative here, anytime there is an upgrade to a test kit, if they add a, uh, 
a, a voltage source or anything to it. We always calibrate them before we send them out. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's part of the process with any upgrades or anything like that. Calibrations are performed. So that's another thing that we'll review is all of the documentation that is generated during the process. Any notes that we might uh, give you to alert you of things that you may need to do when you get the unit back. Any of the calibration documentation, make sure that uh, it is passing, uh, it's properly signed, dated and things like that. But yeah, we've read all the documentation, uh, do the last little inspection of it, and then pass it off to the guys for shipping. Perfect. Thanks, Tim. So, uh, so you, hopefully now you get an idea of the process that we go through and the folks. Uh, starts with Jaquilla, and then uh, it goes to Brian, and if, there, if it happens to be anything out of the, the norm or what's already agreed upon, it may go back to Jaquilla to contact you again. And then once Brian does uh, his reparations, calibrations, then, then it, at the final step is that Tim has to bless it before it goes out the door. So um, we are now, uh, you should see here soon the next upcoming webinars and what we're going to be doing moving forward. Uh, please send in suggestions or anything that you would like to see um, because we've been using those. Several of these webinars have been totally customer suggestions. Uh, once again, uh, take advantage while we're in this situation. If you need to, um, if you'd like some training for just your folks on a particular form and issues with that form and any crazy service type you've got at your place you know the old ones that have been there for 30 years I mean just uh, just give us a holler and we'd love to set those up and make it one-on-one -on -one for your group and uh, and we've been doing those or if you want to take a look at a particular product please do that because we absolutely would be more than willing to show you a product and we really appreciate the support that everybody's been giving us on this uh, it's been uh, all fulfilling for us because um, there's a lot that goes into this and uh, with these guys that you can't see off camera most of the time. I just stand here and run my gums. But uh, also, uh, as you know, knowing me, I'm going to close this out. Uh, oh, wait. Uh, hats, do we know yet, or are we going to let them know? Tim Dowdy. Tim? Tim Dowdy. Tim Dowdy. Survey says. CDA. CDA. I like that. <laughs> so CDA and Dowdy, you have one hats. So look for those in the mail. And uh, I'm going to go ahead, as you know, and close us out with a prayer. Uh, you guys be careful out there. You know, I know there's stuff opening up. Um, everybody's talking about there may be a second surge. So just please be careful out there, your distancing and, and all that. But uh, I just, I think that people, uh, you know, when they talk about essential workers, I'm proud to say that I'm part of an, in, an industry that is because uh, the techs are still out there testing and they're still out there doing their work. So uh, you guys be careful out there, okay? You, you men and ladies be careful, okay? All the support folks too because it's, with these offices the way they are now, you got to watch yourself both indoors and outdoors, so be careful, okay? And I'm going to go ahead and close this out. Thanks. Father, thank you so much for this time today. Uh, thank you so much uh, for these men that support me every time we do these. And, uh, Father, we, it looks like uh, we're starting to open up in this country, so let us be careful and not start laxing up to cause uh, more people to get this and to have to deal with it. Uh, it seems like we're moving forward. Thank you so much for that. And uh, thank you so much for all these men and women that uh, in the healthcare industry that have gone out and jumped right there in the front line and all of the support that they've been getting uh, from the different states uh, financially that we're seeing out with folks. And it's just, uh, it's just awesome to see the country coming together and, uh, and fighting this thing. And uh, so, Father, we just ask that you uh, give us some relief moving forward. But whatever your will, let that be done. And as always, most importantly, thank you so much for what Jesus did for us so that I can even pray right now. So all of these things I ask and say, according to the will of the one who paid it all, my brother, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you all. God bless. And be careful out there, all right?